Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and today we're going to preview the Critics' Choice Awards. So the nominations for the 22nd Annual Critics' Choice Awards were just released this past week, and they will be airing on Sunday, December 11th, so right around the corner. So I wanted to just go ahead, give my reaction to the nominees, some snubs, some surprises, and look forward to what it is we're in store for on the 11th. So what I enjoy about the Critics' Choice Awards is that they have such a diverse cast of awards that they hand out. So they do the typical kind of Oscar-y award style, but they also add in, you know, action, sci-fi and horror, all these other really fun categories that I enjoy. However, I don't think the Critics' Choice Awards are one of the better indicators for what we're expected to see come Oscar season, so I kind of take the award show overall with a bit of a grain of salt, but it still is kind of the kickoff. It's the first major awards show that crowned winners before we get the BAFTAs, the Golden Globes, the SAG Awards leading into Oscar night. So just some overall reactions before we go award by award. I'm really happy to see Moonlight getting the love it's getting both at like the Spirit Awards and other Critics' Choice Awards. It's just great to see that it's not getting consumed in the big mix of it all. I will say I am shocked that Hacksaw Ridge did it. They pulled it off. I, I wasn't sure if anti Mel Gibson narrative would be enough to keep, you know, a really strong movie from getting the buzz, but they've done it. I'm also shocked that Arrival has launched as successful a campaign as it has. I personally liked the film, didn't love it. So I'll be looking at nominees right down here as I go through. There's quite a few of them. So let's just kind of go category by category and talk about these awards. So for Best Picture, we had Arrival, Fences, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, La La Land, Lion, Loving, Manchester by the Sea, Moonlight, and Sully. That's a total of 10 nominees. And overall, this is a really solid Lit. No real surprises here for me. I wondered if Sully was going to be able to really launch a good enough campaign, if it was really in the conversation enough. So apparently, they're doing their job. But of course, all of our favorites heading into award season are here. We have Loving, Manchester by the Sea, La La Land, Fences, and Moonlight, which I think are going to be the major contenders come Oscar season. I will say I have yet to see Loving, and I'm going to be watching Hell or High Water here very shortly because it's out now on, on video, um, and Lion has yet to open in a theater here in Denver. So three of those I haven't seen. One snub that I wish would have made the list is definitely Nocturnal Animals. I know it's a little bit divisive and it's not a home run amongst critics, but personally I loved it and I think it deserved to be up there. So for Best Actor, we have Casey Affleck in Manchester by the Sea. We have Joel Edgerton, Loving. Andrew Garfield, Hacksaw Ridge. Tom Hanks in Sully. And Denzel Washington in Fences. Again, the only kind of shock is really that um, Sully got Tom Hanks in there, but it's not a shock if you watch the film. He's so good. I just was a little bit worried his role was too understated for the Academy to really appreciate. But critics loved it, so we'll see if the Academy follows suit. But all the big players are here. Casey Affleck was amazing. Definitely deserves that nomination. I think that Denzel looks like he's going to be amazing. Haven't seen the film yet. Andrew Garfield was so good in Hacksaw Ridge. So while this is definitely a good crop of nominees, and no surprises really, I'm, I'm a little bit sad on a personal level that Jake Gyllenhaal isn't nominated for Nocturnal Animals because he was so good. I don't know what he's going to have to do to get just an Oscar nomination in one of these years, but it's looking like his window for Nocturnal Animals this year is closing. Best Actress. We have Amy Adams in Arrival, Annette Bedding in 20th Century Women, Isabel Hooper in Elle, Ruth Nigga in Loving, Natalie Portman in Jackie, and Emma Stone in La La Land. So, is there really any contention that Natalie Portman has this locked up? 
I think as soon as we saw that Viola Davis was being pushed for supporting actress, this award is as good as Locked Up, and I think it's very well deserving. She was amazing in Jackie. I personally thought Amy Adams was better in Nocturnal Animals and think she should have got that nomination there. I think Emma Stone is very good in La La Land, so I'm happy to see her getting some love. Some noticeable absences for me, Jessica Chastain and Miss Sloan, definitely definitely deserves a nomination. And I'm surprised to not see Meryl Streep nominated. Uh, I know people are hating on her and all that fun jazz, but she really was fantastic in Florence Foster Jenkins. So next up we have Best Supporting Actor. We start off with Mahersha Ali from Moonlight, Jeff Bridges, Hell or High Water, Ben Foster from Hell or High Water, Lucas Hedges in Manchester by the Sea, Dev Patel in Lion, and Michael Shannon in Nocturnal Animals. So finally, we get some love for Nocturnal Animals, and I think Michael Shannon definitely deserves the nomination. He was amazing in that film. And again, I haven't seen Hell or High Water yet, and Lion hasn't opened, so half of the nominees I can't really comment on. But Lucas Hedges was great in Manchester by the Sea, as was Mahershal Ali in Moonlight. So the, the three that I have seen, all were fantastic and definitely deserving of their nominations. So Best Supporting Actress, as mentioned earlier, Viola Davis, Fences, Greta Gerwig, 20th Century Women, Naomi Harris, Moonlight, Nicole Kidman, Lion, Janelle Monae, Hidden Figures, and Michelle Williams, Manchester by the Sea. Again, a very strong crop of nominees. I was a little bit worried when at the Early Indie Awards, Naomi Harris wasn't getting as much love as I was hoping she'd get, so I'm super excited to see her name here because she deserves it. Um, I think right now, this is Viola Davis's award to lose, just from the trailers, I haven't seen the film. Um, but I kind of am pulling for her even before I see the film. I know, bias. Sorry. Who I am disappointed to not see on this list is Lupita Nyong'o from Queen of Katwe. Her performance was so good in that movie. I'm actually kind of stunned that she didn't get the nomination. Hopefully Disney will launch a better campaign moving forward for the other award shows. But it's a, it's a solid list here. So let's go ahead and just talk about Best Director next. We have Damien Chazelle in La La Land. Mel Gibson, Hacksaw Ridge, Barry Jenkins, Moonlight, Kenneth Lonergan, Manchester by the Sea, David McKenzie, Hell or High Water, Dennis Villeneuve in Arrival, and then Denzel Washington, Fences. So while the films I thought had shots at definitely getting in those nominations for acting and for Best Picture, I'm really proud and really surprised to see Denzel Washington getting in both acting and directing. I'm also super shocked that Mel Gibson went ahead and got his own name thrown in the race. So, some exciting developments there. But again, just solid list. I think that Damien Chazelle was amazing with how he handled La La Land. And it was such a passion project for him that I'm excited to see him in there. I think Barry Jenkins. Wonderful, Manchester by the Sea had really strong directing, so great list here as well. So let's talk about Best Animated Feature next. We have Finding Dory, Kubo and the Two Strings, Moana, The Red Turtle, Trolls, and Zootopia. So I've yet to see The Red Turtle, but I have seen the other five nominees, and I am personally stunned that Trolls is in there. Even if you enjoyed the film, do you really think that it was the best animated film, even in the best six animated films of the year? I've yet to see your name, but I've heard nothing but great praises for that film. I'm really stunned that Trolls would beat something like that out. I'm stunned that Trolls could beat out something like April in the Extraordinary World. I'm stunned that Trolls could even beat out something like Kung Fu Panda 3. So that nominee just really baffled my entire brain. As for the others, it's kind of the four that I expect to see from the big studios moving forward having any shot. I mean, there's kind of an obligatory Pixar slot, so of course Finding Dory is there. Disney had two monster hits, both amazing quality films with Moana and Zootopia, and then Kubo and the Two Strings was just like masterful in its artistic direction and just a masterful film. So the last category I'm going to talk about all of the nominees in is Best Original Song. So we have Audition, The Fools Who Dream from La La Land, Can't Stop the Feeling 
from Trolls. City of Stars, also from La La Land. Drive It Like You Stole It from Sing Street. How Far I'll Go from Moana. And The Rules Don't Apply from The Rules Don't Apply. So the only one of these I don't know in context is from Rules Don't Apply because I haven't seen that film. But I love these nominees. The three songs I am rooting, rooting, rooting for in award season this year are How Far I'll Go from Moana, Drive It Like You Stole It from Sing Street, and audition um, from La La Land. City of Stars is also fantastic from La La Land, so I'm excited to see that in there. And I actually have no doubt that both of those are going to be really heavy hitters and the probable hands-on favorites heading into Oscars. But I'm also really happy to see Justin Timberlake get a nomination here because who didn't love Can't Stop the Feeling this summer? So I just really needed to call these out. I'm really happy Drive It Like You Stole It is the representative from Sing Street here. It's my favorite song on that soundtrack. And I've been singing How Far I'll Go since I've seen Moana, so happy it also got the recognition it deserves. So now I'm just going to talk about kind of the award show at large and some of the weird things. One, why are movies able to get like double dip nominations? I'm pretty much baffled by how Doctor Strange can be nominated for Best Action, but also be nominated for Best Sci-Fi and Horror. I think that kind of like the Golden Globes, they should be required to submit into one field. And then we have Deadpool, who is Best Action and Best Comedy. So it's, it, I just wish they would be kind of forced into choosing one. I think certainly Deadpool should have been in action. And I think there's a case to be made for both when it comes to Doctor Strange. I'm not really sure why sci-fi and horror are together. The genres should be judged vastly different. Um, so if you're going to award both of them, I think you should have separated them. We had so many quality horror films. We could have easily filled a five to six nominee slate there. For best actor in an action film, how? How is Michael Fassbender in X-Men Apocalypse not nominated? I mean, come on. Think what you want about that movie, but his performance was amazing. I also think James McAvoy was amazing in that movie. How do they not get nominated is beyond me. I'm also a little bit curious as to Hacksaw Ridge being classified as a best action film. It seems like a little bit of a cheat to me. Um, I don't think it really belongs in that category. And I, I mean, it's just going to kind of sweep through, I think, at this point. Kind of sad for the other action movies that aren't getting the shine in the big categories that they're being put up against Hacksaw Ridge. So predictions time. Best picture. Who do I think should win? La La Land by a smidge. Who do I think will win? I'm gonna throw a curveball. I think it's gonna be Moonlight. Best Actor. From what I've seen, I'm gonna go ahead and give it to Casey Affleck from Manchester by the Sea for should win. Who I think will win? I'm gonna go Denzel Washington. Haven't seen the movie yet, but let's say Denzel. Best Actress who I think should win and will win is Natalie Portman from Jackie. Best Supporting Actor should win Michael Shannon from Nocturnal Animals. Will win, I'll say Dev Patel. Haven't seen Lion yet, but I feel it, so we'll see. <laughs> Best Supporting Actress should win Naomi Harris from Moonlight, because I haven't seen Fences yet, but will win Viola Davis Fences. Best Young Actor or Actress should win Haley Steinfeld from The Edge of Seventeen will win Lucas Hedges from Manchester by the Sea. Best Acting Ensemble should win Moonlight, just because I don't think you can really recognize any of the individual actors as much, but they were great as an ensemble. Will win? I'll say Hidden Figures. It could easily be Manchester by the Sea or Fences though, but I'll say Hidden Figures. Best Director should win and will win Damien Chazelle from La La Land. Original Screenplay? should win and will win Damien Chazelle for La La Land. Best Adapted Screenplay should win Tom Ford for Nocturnal Animals, will win August Wilson for Fences. Cinematography should win and will win La La Land. Best Production Design should win Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, will win La La Land. Editing should win and will win Moonlight. Costume Design should win Florence Foster Jenkins, will win Jackie. Best hair should win and will win Jackie. Best visual effects. This one is super hard. Um, I will say should win 
The Jungle Book will win Doctor Strange. Best animated feature, also super hard. And although Moana is my favorite, I'm actually going to say should win. Kubo on the Two Strings will win Zootopia. Best action movie. Should win Captain America Civil War. Will win Hacksaw Ridge. Actor in an action movie. Should win and will win Andrew Garfield in Hacksaw Ridge. Actress in an action movie. Should win and will win Margot Robbie from Suicide Squad. Best comedy should win The Nice Guys, will win The Edge of Seventeen. Best actor in a comedy, I'll say should and will win Ryan Gosling in The Nice Guys. Actress in a comedy should and will win Meryl Streep in Florence Foster Jenkins. Sci-fi slash horror film should win and will win Ten Cloverfield Lane. Best foreign language film, can't comment, sorry. Best song should and will win Audition. From La La Land. Best score should win and will win La La Land. So those are my thoughts and those are my predictions for the Critics' Choice Awards. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Who do you think got snubbed? Who were some surprises in there? And who will you be rooting for come December 11th when the Critics' Choice Awards air? Let me know in the comment section down below or hit me up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!